Hello everybody and welcome back to the Chassis Variant Series with myself, Critical Rocket, and here we are on the Stormcrow Bravo. Now, it had the glorious domination theme, but this is not a win. But it's a damn good fight, it's a damn good urban battle, and I do love myself a nice brutal mech fight in any of uh, Mech Royal Lines. Little, little nuggets that you can get out of it when you can get these kind of matches that play out, and yeah, this this was just a lot of fun. So I thought because the the Stormcrow was such a good mech, I I, I really enjoyed playing this thing. Uh, it I think it deserved to be in the series anyway. And plus, I, everyone seems to really like the intro, so you know, I uh, can't go wrong there. Um, yeah, so Stormcrow Bravo is kind of like the alpha version in that it's another close-in knife fighter, but it has a much more simple, straightforward layout rather than having a kind of mix of weaponry. This one just goes for six ER mediums and a single Ultra AC-20. So its Omnipod loadout is actually quite straightforward. It has a single ballistic in the left arm and six energy in the right arm. Nothing in the side torsos. But it does mean that the Bravo is probably one to pick up purely for its right arm Omnipod because it just gives you a ton of hard points to choose from and play with. Um, so heat's an issue, obviously. And... You know, your UAC-20 is going to do a lot of damage, but it's also going to generate a lot of heat. So, the problem is heat, but the upshot is that it does a phenomenal amount of damage in a very short space of time. And that's what makes this mech so much fun to play. Um, it's just great fun to find a nice spot and just rain death with the ER mediums and the Ultra AC-20. And um, default, I think it only has two tons of ammunition for the Ultra AC-20. Um, which, yeah, alright, granted, isn't fantastic. Uh, and if you wanted to switch this around for something a bit different, obviously you can, and I'm sure it would work out a lot better. Or obviously, maybe changing the ER mediums down to like small pulses and having the uh, maybe a, a ton more ammunition for you at 20, so it becomes something that's even more brutal short-range killer. Which is perfectly viable with the Stormcrow because it runs pretty fast, 97 kph. Uh, by default, that's without speed tweak as far as I remember uh, in the skill setup. So it can go faster, can go over 100 kph, and uh, it's got pretty decent armor to boot. So it, it's it's such a perfect all-round clan medium. It's it's right up as a, a much feared battle map is not hyperbole. It really is a really deadly design. Um, the background of it is, is kind of limited, but basically the mech was uh, used a lot by Smoke Jaguar in their Talman. But the mech was once again built by Clan Hell's Horses, who uh, seem to have been innovators in quite a few areas of clan technology, but not big enough to really be able to hold on to a lot of their gear. So what would tend to happen for the Hell's Horses and some of the other smaller clans is they'd develop some of these new mechs or technology, and the bigger clans would just immediately leap on them to take it off them. And unfortunately, that's what would happen nine times out of ten. And as such, Hell's Horses are the innovators, but hardly ever the ones that get to use their own designs on the field exclusively for any real length of time. And the Stormcrow was one of those mechs that was being built on Tokasha before it was uh, taken by Ghost Bear, who obviously then uh, gained the factory that would produce them. However, the design was kind of released into the into the ether, so to speak and basically every clan got hold of the design in one form or another and was perfected by Snow Raven, which is another lesser clan by comparison to the big ones who uh, ended up making the first actual field uh, regular version, so to speak, the actual Prime. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a damn good mech. It's second generation, I guess. That doesn't really mean much outside of the fluff to say that it's where you've got the likes of the Woodsman and... Um, some of the other original Omnimax out there. This is just a uh, maybe a refinement of that technology. Sorry if you can hear a cat in the background, she's uh, looking at birds out the window. Um, so yeah, uh, that, that's, there's not really much else background wise for the, the Stormcrow. It's, it's just one of those really solid all round designs that uh, has seen extensive use by every clan out there. And as far as I'm aware it's not one of those mechs that is uh, in danger of being lost to time or, or not being produced anymore. Unlike the Nova, which in the previous season, uh, sorry, series of videos, suggested that 
the numbers of that mech are actually in steady decline because no more are being built. This mech seems to be still regularly produced, uh, I guess for good reason. If you haven't tried out the Stormcrow uh, in any form, uh, I don't think you can go wrong really with any model of the Stormcrow. The, the oh, I nearly got that, Jenna. Uh, the, the Stormcrow uh, Alpha, Bravo, Prime, uh, and Charlie are all pretty decent. The Delta is a bit more specialised, but yeah, uh, Bravo is a really good solid choice because you can just come up with some really nasty builds for that right off and uh, maybe, as I said, rejigger the ballistics and whatever. But uh, it, I think it's perfectly viable max stock, to be honest, with the skills that give it a little bit more ammunition for UAC-20. You can do some solid damage with that thing. But yeah, it, as long as you keep in mind that heat management is key, and some ammunition and some heat skills will definitely help it out if you run the stock build for a little while before you, you sort of come up with something that works better for you. Uh, it's it will it'll do you, it'll do you wonders. Ah, got that Jenna popped him. Um, so yeah, this is uh, coming up to the end of this round. Uh, you, you'll see a catapult with Jade Falcon uh, logos on the inside of the missile dust, which uh, I think I spent more time looking at the end than anything else. But this is about to wrap up. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you have a good week, and I'll see you next time. Bye.